As we walked, Detective Richmond revealed that not only had Esther been brutally beaten, she had told the detective she was sexually abused as well, often in the men's bathroom. A lot of the beatings occurred in here where she would be made to stand in a circle. She said uh, one would beat her until that one got tired and then the other one would start beating her. She was beat with ropes, chains, whips, umbrellas, bats, hammers. Joe and Evangeline Combs were arrested in November of 1998, and Esther was there. Debbie let me come because I wanted, I wanted to see, I wanted them to see me. You know, Debbie hadn't done it, I had done it. I'm the one that told. And what happened? Did you speak to them? She come walking over to me and telling me how much she loved me and that I was her baby girl. I think it's the first time that she had said I love you that many times. What did you say? Every time she kept telling me that she loved me, I just kept telling her I didn't want her love. As much as I did, I'd always wanted it. I just kept telling her I didn't want it. But even at that moment? I wanted it. Joseph and Evangeline Combs pled not guilty to charges unthinkable in this small town. Child abuse, kidnapping, rape. And their other children rose to their defense. Brothers Jimmy and David Combs and sister Cindy also denied any involvement in Esther's alleged abuse. So if your brothers and sisters say that they never saw you beaten, then they're lying. But the trial was approaching and it would be Esther's word against the rest of her family, not the strongest of cases against a powerful preacher in a town of true believers. Prosecutors worried. Then an almost miraculous discovery in a curbside trash can. And now the dramatic conclusion to Sylvia Chase's story. Reverend Joe Combs and his wife, Evangeline, are about to go on trial charged with child abuse, kidnapping, and rape. And despite everything Esther has been through, prosecutors are not sure they can get a conviction. The case would have come down to Esther's word against the rest of her family had it not been for a totally unexpected break. By chance, a former cellmate of Evangeline Combs found critical evidence recognizing the family in photos discarded in this curbside trash can, turning them into police. Photographs supporting Esther's story, her hands bandaged after being burned, her eye blackened, her chin bruised, her other eye bruised and cut, all as she had said. And when Joseph and Evangeline Combs walked into court, people who had known them finally began to talk. Did he ever tell you what? Esther Combs' purpose was in life. Did Mr. Combs tell you that? He said that God had created her to be a servant and they were training her to serve. Dozens of people had been interviewed by Detective Richmond, who believes they were afraid to challenge the preacher. Now, they testified about the nagging concerns they'd had for Esther. But no evidence spoke louder than the scars. 410 wounds, scars upon scars. She grabbed my skin with the pliers, pulled, tw twisted it and pulled it out until it took a, a She grabbed my off. teeth and shoved them back up in my mouth. And when I looked up, he just cracked the stick over my head and it started bleeding and I fell to the floor. Esther sat, trembling through the questioning, at times shielding her eyes from the gaze of her parents. There was little attempt to rebut her testimony. Did you or did you not give her a black eye? Never. For a few brief hours, Joseph Combs took the stand in his own defense. He denied all of Esther's accusations. I, I, I'm bewildered by all of this. I can't, I can't get my mind around it. It doesn't make any sense. Evangeline Combs did not testify. The defense team relied heavily on the testimony of the other Combs children. But in the end, it took the jury three hours to reach their verdicts. You find the defendant Joseph D. Combs, guilty of intentional or annoying aggravated assault. Joe Combs was found guilty of assault, aggravated abuse, rape, and kidnapping. Evangeline Combs was guilty of multiple aggravated abuse charges. 
wearing their prison stripes from the Sullivan County Jail. Joseph and Evangeline Combs came to court for sentencing. Joseph Combs was sentenced to a total of 106 years and was immediately led from the court. As Evangeline Combs awaited her sentencing, Esther Combs asked for the chance to speak directly to her parents one last time. I just wish you could tell me what I did to make you hate me because I loved you so much, even though you put me through hell because I told myself you did it because you loved me. Evangeline Combs would only stare back, emotionless, as Esther spoke. She would soon be sentenced to 65 years in prison. I would have done anything for you. I would have moved mountains if I thought it would make you love me. That's how much I loved you. That's how much you hurt me. <laughs> 